Peter, welcome back to Nationwide. Now, we all know that the history of Ireland is extensive and complex, dating back to, what, 6000 BC, perhaps. And when somebody decides to examine or to research our country's history, it can be very difficult to leave it, to turn your back on it or to let it be. Well, that's exactly what happened in any case to one man in Ballina. And Maria Malarkey has recently been to Ballina to find out more about the remarkable Jackie Clark and his legacy. Jackie Clark was born in Ballina in 1927. He was a successful businessman in the town until his death in 2000. He was also an avid collector of Irish historical material. In 2005, his widow Anne gifted his collection to Mayo County Council for the people of Ballina, Mayo and Ireland. It is the most important private collection of Irish history material in public hands, comprising over 100,000 items spanning 400 years. It includes artefacts associated with Wolf Tone, letters from Michael Collins and Douglas Hyde. It also contains rare books, posters, pamphlets, newspapers, maps, and personal items from leaders of the 1916 Rising. All of the material, the Jackie Clark Collection, is now housed in the former Provincial Bank building in Ballina, following the wishes of Jackie himself. I met Jackie in 61 and married in 1965. We had five boys and a happy marriage. When he was born a few years after the War of Independence and before World War II. And he listened to the old men in the shop and the radio was on. I listened to the old men talking about the troubled times, the Civil War, the War of Independence and that. And that's how he come to, that's how he liked history. Mayo County Council were absolutely thrilled back in 2005 when Anne and the Clark family initially approached us with the idea of hosting the collection here in Ballina. It's a collection of 100,000 objects of tremendous historical and cultural significance uh, and a collection which we couldn't possibly have aspired to acquire in any other way. The generosity of the family is quite stunning and we've been working since then uh, in providing a base which does the collection, which is of international significance, uh, proud. In our view, this is a collection of international importance. It's drawn a lot of attention from uh, the United States in particular, and also people who are interested in the last 400 years of Irish history uh, have come from all over Europe uh, to visit the collection, and we're only in the very early stages uh, of broadcasting the message. Uh, we think it's a hugely important centre uh, on a national scale, uh, and obviously for the county and for Jackie's hometown, uh, we think it will be a beacon of hope into the future. Author and historian Sinead McCool originally came to Ballina for six weeks to go through Jackie's historical collection. But it soon transpired that the collection was vast and eight years later Sinead is still here and is still going through the historical artefacts. The collection is vast and we're really just at the beginning of that journey. Um, I would see that it'll be and maybe another decade before the, the fullness of the collection will be catalogued and, and gone through. What we've actually done is we've almost opened the sweet shop, as, it, as you could describe, in the sense that we've given people a sense of some of the material, but for each item that's on display, there's a whole wealth of other material that can be swapped out and replaced. It was my father's wish to have his historical collection on display uh, in Ballina, for the people of Ballina, Mayo and Ireland and indeed Irish diaspora all over the world. My father would be very proud to see the collection displayed here in the old provincial bank in Cairn Street, Ballina. It's a, a hugely uh, important collection for the people of Ireland. Jackie Clark collected things that told Irish history in documents and images. 
Visitors to the building can see the fabric flower called a cockade that Wolftone wore affixed to his hat when he was captured while leading a failed rebellion against the English in 1798. They can also see the 1916 letter from the commander of Kilmainham Jail asking a priest named Father Aloysius to visit the Easter Rebellion leader, Podrick Pierce, before his execution. And they can even step into the bank's old vault to study the 1916 Easter proclamation, one of only three dozen or so still in existence. The Jackie Clark collection will never be recreated again because of the time in which he lived. So he started collecting when he was 12 years of age, when the people that had been involved in the 1916 Rising um, were at the end of their lives. So he accessed material at that time over those key periods of time um, when he was already looking and searching for it in a time when it wasn't fashionable or profitable to do that. I think it's absolutely fantastic collection. Um, it's, it's an immense collection, just the amount of stuff that's here. It's amazing to think that this was all collected by one man throughout his lifetime. It's great for a man to have a place like this to, to walk in. When your own time, you can ponder around and look at whatever you never know what you find out. Um, because I think it's interesting and I like the way that the newspaper around here that from the old times and I like these here as well and I like it in here.